Hello, it is I, Jeremiah Mick Recording, and you are watching Red Beans Recording. Today, we're going to be looking at a new plugin from Wave Alchemy that is the reproduction of a very, very, very famous reverb called the AMS RMX 16. Wave Alchemy reached out to me to do this video on their plugin Glow, and uh, I normally don't like to just do single plugin videos. Um, this is sponsored by them, by the way. But I was like, oh, there's some history here. And I'm really, really digging being able to research this kind of stuff and like learn about music history when it comes to gear. So this is an opportunity for me and uh, hopefully you to learn something about this really famous reverb. And then we'll check out the reverb plugin from them. I'll give you a hint. It goes a little bit like this. Let's go on a journey together. Okay, so let's start off by saying that this thing is on so many records that you've heard. Um, if you're of a certain age, it's absurd. I just kept on finding more and more people that use this thing that I loved, and um, it's really, really cool. Let's talk about AMS, Advanced Music Systems. They were formed in 1976 by Mark Crabtree, who is an electronics engineer in an aerospace company. The first product that they put together with two of his aerospace engineer colleagues, AKA nerds, was uh, something called the DM220 Tape Phase Simulator. I mean, like, yeah, seriously, like nerds, right? From there, they released a digital delay line product, and then they released the AMS RMX16 in the great year of 1981. So it was a digital reverb. These were kind of rare at that point. It was also the first digital reverb to use a microprocessor, which is pretty cool. So in terms of digital reverbs around that time, uh, the first one, and this is, this is amazing, check this out. This is the EMT 250 that was released in 1976. And <laughs> when I saw this, I was like, does it like scoot around on the floor? Like, can you put googly eyes on it? You know, is it like a little Roomba? It, it's absurd. It was expensive. Very expensive, $15,000. 1978, the Lexicon 224 was released. It had a lot of the same features as the EMT 250, but it was about half the price. So you know everybody getting on that Lexicon train at that point. I just wanna give a special shout out in the history of digital reverb to this other one that I found, the 1999 Sony Dre S77. This was actually uh, one of the first, if not the first convolution hardware reverb. And this thing, this thing looks exactly like what you would think Sony in 1999 would release. Like some whack ass echo the dolphin like looking liminal space reverb it's it's quite frankly amazing okay so remember how i went earlier okay well that sound that gated reverb sound became famous because of this reverb but that's not what did the reverb on those drums. So let me explain to you how that came about. And in case you don't know, that's the famous Tom Phil from In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. Almost everybody has this burned into their head if they've heard it once or twice. It's kind of a mem. So the story goes, engineer Huge Pad Ham um, at uh, Townhouse Studio 2 in 1979. He was there uh, with Phil Collins to record Peter Gabriel's track Intruder. So this studio had an SSL 4000B mixing console. It's the first ever installed in a mixing studio, which is pretty Pretty cool. It had a talkback mic on it, which is uh, a thing that allows the person in the studio to talk with the people in the live room and back and forth. So, you know, you can communicate things uh, between like the producers, the engineer, and the band members. So, this thing had a talkback mic uh, wired into the live room and the SSL. Uh, the talkback mic signal was actually getting a bunch of compression on it. So, it was like getting squished and then they made it louder so that everyone in the studio room could hear what was going on in the live room. So, you can imagine you got this live room, you've got this, uh, this talkback mic, you've got a bunch of compression on it. So you've got this big reverb and a bunch of compression. If anyone here has ever messed around with the concept of putting compression after reverb, especially with drums, you might start to get a little inkling of what happened here. So what happened was that Padgham accidentally left the talkback mic on while Phil Collins was playing the drums. So like I said, heavy compression, uh, drums in a live room, the sound was just like insane. It was just like this, the reverb got like choked by the drums and it was like this really, really aggressive kind of interesting sound. And Padgham, like he liked it so much that he went and he rewired the SSL real quick to be able to record the talkback mic signal because at that point you couldn't really do it. So he was like, I'm gonna make that different. And, he went, blah, 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 and that sound became the drums on Intruder. So later though, Phil Collins and Padgham did the same thing, uh, but this time they added what's called a noise gate afterwards. And what that means is that after the reverb tail got to a certain point, the noise gate would kick in and go chunk and chunk it down. And that's where that gated reverb sound comes from. From first that accident and then uh, further experimentation with a noise gate after that thing. So now you know. So Crabtree of AMS was like, you know, I'm going to make an algorithm that sounds like this for the AMS RMX-16. And that's where the non-LIN2 algorithm came from, which became 
insanely famous. So let's talk about how famous. Here's a quote from Prince's engineer, Susan Rogers. As Rogers recalls, Prince had applied a gated reverb preset called Non-Lin 2 from an AMS RMX-16 digital reverb unit to the Lin LM1 drum machine, a unique production method that was highly favored and emulated at the time. He loved that gated reverb, she told Vox back in 2017. In fact, the AMS RMX-16's Non-Lin 2 can be heard all over Purple Rain, from the cracking snares on When Doves Cry to the crashing drum sounds of the album's resolute title track, as well as beyond his 1984 triumph, notably on the pulsing kick drum of his hit single, Kiss. We will run some Lin LM1 samples through this plugin as soon as I'm done yapping. Kate Bush, Hounds of Love, the drums are Hounds of Love. John Cougar Mellencamp, Jack and Diane drums. My favorite, Peter Gabriel, Sledgehammer. God, I love that track. Uh, Hall and Notes, Dance on Your Knees. Dire Straits, Money for Nothing. It's everywhere. It, it was such a thing. And then eventually, people got real tired of it. As the 90s started to come around, people were like, nah, we're done with this. But, as you know, everything that's old is new again, and uh, we love all that production stuff now. So having that that gated reverb in a plugin is super, super cool. So I like, I've been using the uh, Valhalla Room gated reverb sound. Um, I've been using the IR in uh, the hybrid reverb from Ableton for that uh, gated snare sound, but they're not the same. So like, this is it, you know? And of course it's got other uses outside that reverb sound, that gated reverb sound, which we will explore, but it's like, finally, I don't have to like second guess it anymore, you know? <laughs> All right, so that's the history of the AMS RMX-16. We've got it in a plugin now called Glow. Let's go check it out. Here we are in Ableton. All right, let's start off with our, uh, our friend, the Tom thing. This is how I think of every single Tom fill I've ever done in my entire life. So <laughs> it's a good place to start. Um, let's go into my plugins and grab an instance of Glow. Here it is. Look at this beauty. It's so pretty. Now, the first thing that you might want to do is come in and, uh, you know, change the theme. I like the pink quite a bit. Classic black's really nice too. So let's go ahead and find a really simple preset like this. Already sounding cool though. This is not the non-lin to uh, reverb. We have a time. <laughs> Over here is our algorithm right here. So if we change this to non-lin two, which is right here, we're going to hear that classic sound. And now we can come in and adjust our time, our mix, and our pre-delay. So this is how long before the reverb actually kicks in. I'm gonna keep it at zero. And then uh, low, so we can take lows out or add them. Same thing with air. And then flux, which if we turn up the timing, you're gonna hear there's this really interesting sort of swarminess to the sound, like swimmy swarm or swamp. Let's put it back on like a uh, hall. So it sounds pretty chaotic, right? Do you hear that? That's flux. So straight. Fishy swim. So that's pretty cool. Uh, modern, I'm gonna turn modern off. I like the original emulation. It's a little subtle with the non lin too, but do play with that if you want to uh, see, just sort of like if it adds the kind of flavor that you're looking for with your drum sound or whatever you're working with. So over here, we can monoize it. And this is actually really, really useful. I use mono reverbs on drums quite a bit, um, especially like drum loops. I will, uh, like if they're mono drum loops, uh, like vintage drum loops, I'll use a mono reverb because I don't want the reverb to like create a new space. I just want it to feel like it's in the space that the original drum loop was in. We also have a smooth function. So listen to how the transients hit with smoothing off. High end of each transient in the reverb is well represented. Smooth kind of like smooths that out. So a very useful thing to have, depending on how you want your uh, your reverb to sound on the transient level. Duck. So this is sort of a ducking around the input signal. Really, really cool to have. This is something I actually do quite a bit with compression. So this is actually pretty cool to have just as a control right here. And um, I'd like to see more reverbs have a ducking function in them. We have a gate up here. So 
So you can you can uh, make any of these in a uh, Gator Reaper if you want, which is pretty cool. Awesome. I need to record this for all of the little drum fills I did earlier. So I need to be able to get this to sound as exactly how I want it. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab a drum bus, put it before here, get some compression, some drive. There it is, baby. <laughs> put a limiter on that. And that will be what I use for all the times that I did the uh, air drumming earlier. All right. Now that we've reproduced the classic sound, let's move on to the Lindrum and listen to what it sounds like uh, with glow on here. So I've got a battery kit for it right here. Let's just start off with some kicks and snares. Much faster. <laughs> So you've probably heard this sound before. Uh, let's go ahead and grab that drum bus. Oh, I do like the compression. That's nice. Okay. Are you ready for the glow? Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. It just makes you want to fucking rage. It's so good. Now, what I'd probably do is put different amounts on each one. I don't know if I can actually do that. Cool, and then we'll go ahead and double this out. And at the eight bar uh, ending, we'll have our toms for this. And then we'll move on to some other instruments and see what it sounds like on those. Now that we have this amazing 80s sound, let's go ahead and add some more stuff to this. We are at 137. Let me see if I have any stuff from the midnight that we could throw in here. Yeah, let's do River of Darkness. Windows in the buildings from the Let's give him some glow, you know? Gotta glow him up. Even though Tyler's pretty glowy to begin with. Let's go into here and see if we have anything for vocals. In the buildings from the now, his vocal already has some reverb on it, so this is a little overkill, but we'll see what we can do. In the buildings from the Ooh. Train. I see a thousand different stories. Oh, cool. So this one's acting almost as like an early reflections thing. And this is actually really, really useful. See how it says bright vocal imager? Using reverbs as stereo imagers is a really, really awesome thing to do. Um, I do it with the early reflection stuff in the convolution side of hybrid reverb all the time. So this is really awesome. You can use this on the backup vocals. You can use it just a little bit on your main vocal to get it a little bit wider without adding a too much uh, reverb to it. So that's really nice. Windows in the from the elevated train. Ooh. That's cool. So we got a mono one here, dark vintage plate. So this is a mono plate reverb. That's uh, a really nice way to get like a vintage sound out of your reverb is monoing it up and darkening it up. Forget why I came here and I forget why I stay and I won. So we're going to put the reverse reverb on him and duck it around his main vocal. Let's go ahead and put in our own bass line real quick. I'm going to try this uh, Juno, see if this works. I don't have a MIDI controller right now. All my MIDI controllers are broken, which is a, a very, very difficult thing to be position-wise in terms of making melodic music. And let's get a, let's get a good sound. Ooh. That's good. I want to add a little bit of glow to this. Holy shit. That's the same plate that we put on his. That reverse sounds crazy on bass. Not gonna lie, I think I'm just gonna go reverse. Okay, so we will come into here and go into reverse two. Delay this. So pre-delay it so it takes a while to get in. Then we will duck it and smooth it. Oh, we want to get all the lows out of it too. That's vibey. I like that. That's super cool. Go ahead and take this. Set one one here. Oh God, that's beautiful. Okay, we're going to put this on the second half here. Fuck yes. Okay, so for this part, uh, I want to hear what it sounds like on guitar. loop get this mix up turn smooth and duck off smooth duck do you like a hairy duck or a smooth duck 
Ooh, that's nice. That's cool. I like that a lot. So we're gonna need a little compression after that. Let's go ahead and add another stem here from our friend. And uh, I think we're almost done. I just wanted to show you what this sounded like in different contexts. Um, so far, it's making a banger of a remix of this track. I really like it. A little too swirly. Have something here. Let's listen to it. Uh, this will be our little outro. We got about a minute out. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Wave Alchemy, for sponsoring this video. I think Glow is amazing. Um, I know they also have a couple other ones in the works. They've got another one out now. It's like a lexicon that I need to check out. And then there's going to be, it might even be the EMT 250 we talked about earlier is coming out as well. I think one of the only ways we could do this before was via Universal Audio stuff. And of course, that's basically you're paying a hardware tax at that point. Uh, it's really nice to have something native that sounds so spot on uh, for this. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks to Wave Alchemy. Thank you to The Midnight for letting me uh, use this stuff. Please don't copyright strike my video. This is done all out of love. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.